Hi, I'm Scout, and the next few videos will be a workflow tutorial on making a Princess Mononoke costume out of garbage, including a mask made out of a bicycle helmet, this wonderful blue prom dress all ripped up, and a set of functional weapons. And this how-to series used to be called Daxplains, um, because my name was Dax up until March, but now my name is Scout, so I guess now it's called Scoutsplains, and sorry that that pun is not quite as strong as it used to be, but some things in life we just don't have any control over, like gender dysphoria. Anyway, moving on, um, I wanted to try something different with this episode, because someone wanted to see me do a build. And up until now, this how-to series has been focused on 2D illustration, but I actually do a lot of 3D illustration, mostly in the realm of theatrical puppetry, and I thought it would be fun to show you that side of my practice. Um, sorry if you were hoping for a tutorial on how to draw boobies. I've never done cosplay, and while I always thought that it's the coolest thing ever, I would never do a straight-ahead costume. So instead, I'm inspired by the feral attitude of San from Princess Mononoke, and how she would cope if she was plopped down in a modern city. Because sometimes, you know, I feel like I'm a feral princess who's been plopped down in a modern city. Given that as a seat, I dug around in my workshop and came out with this old red skateboard helmet, which it just seemed too perfect. I then started sticking all sorts of things onto the helmet to see what felt good. Um, as soon as I thought to use these heels, though, for ears, um, I knew I was onto something, so then this costume, I guess, was just going to have to be a femme theme in addition to being a garbage theme. So this Scout's Plains won't be so much of a tutorial um, as a description of my creative workflow where I talk about decisions that I make and don't spend too much time on tool use or workshop safety. Because, honestly, I don't really know how to use tools properly, and I am the last person you should be getting a workshop safety tutorial from. That said, um, I would like to point out that I am attaching these heels to the mask using rivets. I love rivets. I am sad that more people don't use them for builds. They're easy, um, they're lighter and less obtrusive than attaching things with bolts, and they're much stronger than glue or zip ties. Not that I have anything against using zip ties for construction. Um, if you're curious about rivets, but you've never used them before, I'm also making a quick rivet demo to accompany this video. Just click on the link. I was trying for the longest time to figure out whether or not her ears were black on the inside and then they were just like facing backwards, or whether they were black on the backside and they were like facing forwards. I guess I decided eventually that they were black on the back. Um, I'm using Sign Painter's enamel to black out the soles of these heels. I do sign painting here and there, so I just have this stuff laying around. Um, I think it's Alkid based. It's basically like model miniature paint, but in this massive quantity. Um, any black paint really could have worked on this rubber, but the stuff that I'm using won't chip very easily, and I kind of do plan to get rough with this costume, so that's going to be a bonus. Uh, and then the cool thing about using oil-based paint is that you can fuck up a bit and then always come back later and clean it up with solvent. If I was using like a water-based acrylic, I'd have to scrape the splotch off with a razor blade, which sucks. I spent a lot of time trying to decide how I wanted to sculpt the eyes and mouth. Um, these circular features on this mask are pretty iconic, so I want them to look really special. Um, the materials themselves uh, bring a lot of magic on their own before you even shape them, so for instance, sculpting these features from chunks of scrap metal um, would have given the mask a whole lot more presence than just like painting the features on with paint. Um, but it's important not to get too heavy when you're doing mask work, because every extra ounce is going to take away from how emotive you can be with it when you're performing, so steel and brass were pretty much out. Uh, you can do a lot with paper mache, but it has this sort of lumpy look if it's hand sculpted. Um, alternatively, you can get much more aggressive shapes with carved foam, but no matter how much you paint it to look like something else, it still kind of just looks brittle and it doesn't have good presence. Um, leather is beautiful, but I'm not very good at shaping it, so as you can see, I decided to go with wood. Um, and as this is supposed to be an upcycling aesthetic, I'm going for this chunk of scrap construction lumber instead of um, like a proper carving wood like lindenwood. Uh, this turned out to be a huge pain in the ass because the Douglas fir is tough as shit and it's still horribly splintery. The first thing was to shape the wood to fit the curvature of the helmet, which was relatively painless, um, if a bit time-consuming, using this belt sander. Um, I'm not bothering to take any measurements or make jigs or anything because these are all like one-off pieces. I'm gauging the curvature of the helmet mostly by sanding off a little and then like checking against the helmet and then like sanding off a little bit more. And once they fit well enough onto the helmet, I needed to give them this like rounded conical shape that you see here. Um, but as soon as I tried digging into it with the carving gouges, I realized my mistake with using such a hard, awful wood. Um, which was too bad, because I really wanted that rough, like, hand-carved look for the feral aesthetic. So I compromised by going back to the belt sander for shaping the front of those, and then just doing a surface treatment with hand tools to give it that, like, freshly chewed-on quality. 
Um, even still, it took forever to get a nice surface on all three of those pieces. But hey, they looked pretty good, right? But this was also a good excuse to resharpen all of my gouges. And then since I had the water stones out, I figured I might as well sharpen a few of my knives while I was at it. And so here is me sharpening my switchblade, thinking, huh, what a perfect urban feral weapon this little knife would be, and how San would totally use a switchblade if she lived in a modern city. So the obvious next step was to figure out how to get this iconic Princess Mononoke symbol onto my switchblade. Uh, you can paint directly onto metal with a ton of things, but it will just scratch off. And I intend to use this knife for things, you know? So the first thing I did was to etch the symbol onto the metal using this Dremel tool. Um, just disregard that I'm not actually using an etching tip. Uh, but you use what you got, right? I really wanted to use fingernail polish for the color, uh, but that actually turned out to be too transparent, sadly. So, I guess it's back to the sign painter's enamel. So with the area embossed a little bit underneath the color, this ended up looking so much more intentional than if the paint was just on the surface, you know? And then here's your obligatory switchblade shot. Um, I also got inspired to put the symbol on my favorite Milwaukee box cutter. Um, and while I love the idea of carrying the switchblade around the city with me, I know it's not actually something I could ever include in a cosplay at a con. Um, but I might have a little more luck with the box cutter, especially since I can remove the blade and replace it with a mylar knife, if that's an issue. I'm getting really tempted to try this box cutter as my new EDC too, because it's actually a lot more practical than any of my other knives, honestly. Okay, well that's enough for one video. Um, I still have a lot to do to finish the mask, much less the entire costume. In the next video, you can look forward to a wheat paste demo, as well as some shots of me beating up a sewing machine with a baseball bat. Um, if you like this series, or you just like me personally, please subscribe to my Patreon here. Um, those subscriptions are what have enabled me to become a full-time artist, so I really am grateful for your help.